we're talking about the stomach, right? And we've already learned that the stomach is super acid. Um, let's look a little bit about at the histology of the wall of the stomach. The stomach is interesting because it has got three layers of uh, smooth muscle instead of the two layers that we see in the esophagus and in the rest of the intestinal tract. So it still has the outer longitudinal layer and then the circular layer, but has a third layer of muscle fibers that are going in a diagonal direction. Still has the muscularis mucosa, but um, look at how thick uh, the mucosa of the wall of the stomach is. Now, this might have given you some trouble in 150 when you're trying to identify it through the microscope, because on a microscope slide, you just get this little thin section of it, and getting a thin section, it can confuse you. You can think that that, for example, or that looks like a villus, but there are no villi in the stomach. Um, what you're seeing is what it looks like uh, in uh, with a little thin section, but actually you're looking at little wells going down into uh, the uh, lamina propria of the, this layer of the mucosa. Uh, one of the ways that you can be sure that you're looking at stomach and not at intestines and villi is by looking for these areas where there's a forking at the bottom, that, that kind of a fork or this kind of a fork over here, that never happens uh, with the villi, but it's pretty routine in some areas of the stomach. So the wall of the stomach. Now, let's look a little bit more here. Okay, good. So yeah, see how that could look like a villus, but it's not a finger-like structure, right? You're just cutting across um, something that's actually a three-dimensional kind of a well. Um, but that forking down there, that will alert you to the fact that you're looking at stomach and not at, uh, at intestines. If you were to surf microscopically over the surface of the stomach, this is what it would look like. Um, this is a scanning electron micrograph. So we're really, 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 really zoomed in. Um, but you can see these are not finger-like projections sticking up at you. You are looking down at a series of well. And if you were microscopically down there, you wouldn't be too happy for very long because coming out of these little wells would be hydrochloric acid and a very powerful protease um, known as pepsin. So let's talk about that. The, these, um, uh, this part of the stomach, um, these are known as gastric glands. They're also called gastric pits. And these gastric glands or gastric pits, um, they are um, filled with different types of cells. Um, the cells up near the surface are mostly involved in making mucus. Now, I think most of us generally think of mucus as something yucky, uh, but we've learned how essential it is for defending your lungs against pneumonia, right? Um, and here again in the stomach, if you had no mucus covering up that image that we were just looking at, if you had no mucus there, you would simply digest yourself and die, okay? So mucus is essential. Um, the mucus that is here uh, covering the surface of all of these cells is one of the things that's protecting it from being victim to the hydrochloric acid that's inside of the stomach. And that mucus also contains buffers like bicarbonate that are going to make it so that, um, so let's say here's the layer of mucus and there's bicarbonate in here. So there's hydrochloric acid and pepsin out here. If hydrochloric acid and pepsin start to diffuse into the mucus, uh, the pepsin will get denatured as its pH changes. So it's a very good defense. Yeah. Uh, then we also have got parietal cells. Parietal cells are the cells that make hydrochloric acid. Parietal cells make hydrochloric acid. They make hydrochloric acid by using a, an active transport pump called um, the proton pump. And when people have got problems with heartburn, they will use medications that specifically suppress the proton pump, they're called proton pump inhibitors, and proton pump inhibitors 
um, will keep the parietal cells from being able to make as much hydrochloric acid. These cells, the parietal cells, also make this stuff intrinsic factor, intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is critical for uh, normal health because without intrinsic factor, the vitamin B12 that is in your diet cannot be absorbed into your bloodstream. Let's talk a little bit about vitamin B12. Um, when we were talking about anemia, I mentioned that vitamin B12 um, is different from the other B vitamins in that vitamin B12 is found almost exclusively in animal sources. Um, the level of vitamin B12 in uh, vegetable products is so low that there's no way to just sort of naturally eat a vegan diet that is also high in vitamin B12. That's not a problem if you're vegan. Uh, it just means you need to make a vitamin B12 supplement that's made for vegans, where they take B12 from vegetable sources and super concentrated. So it can be done. Um, but it does mean that people who are careless about their diet um, and are trying to have a vegetarian lifestyle by just eating Doritos and apples or something like that, you can get a vitamin B12 deficiency. So we talked about that. Well, here's another little glitch. You can have an excellent, very rich vitamin B12 diet where you're eating all kinds of animal products, but if your parietal cells don't make intrinsic factor, it just goes right on in and out the other end. A lack of vitamin B12 will cause a problem called pernicious anemia. Now, from the name, you can tell it causes anemia and it's very, very bad, pernicious. But it doesn't just cause anemia, it also causes changes with the brain. So it's really important that we avoid vitamin B12 deficiencies. Now, where will we see uh, a deficiency in intrinsic factor from parietal cells? Generally in the elderly. Uh, whenever elderly people um, become uh, anemic, uh, it's nice to make sure that their diet is, has got enough iron and uh, protein in it. But very often, those older people will simply be given injections of vitamin B12 on the assumption that their parietal cells are not making enough intrinsic factor. Um, when I first heard my parents were getting injections of vitamin B12, I was like, stuff and nonsense, you know, just, just take a vitamin. Uh, but uh, the truth is with vitamin B12, that won't work if you don't have enough intrinsic factor. So make sure that um, for elderly people or elderly members of your family, if they're starting to look anemic at all, you know, that sort of paler or greener look to their skin. And a monthly injection of vitamin B12 can be a complete lifesaver and brain saver. All right. Now, what cells make hydrochloric acid? Those are made by the parietal cells. Um, and what is made... What cells make the pepsinogen? The pepsinogen is made by chief cells. The way I remember this, by the way, I think to myself, well, what is the chief enzyme in the stomach? Like, what's the most important enzyme in the stomach? And the <clears throat> most important enzyme in the stomach is pepsin, and pepsinogen is made from chief cells. <clears throat> We're going to come back to that idea. So before we do, let's talk about what hydrochloric acid does for the stomach. Hydrochloric acid is going to activate this enzyme pepsinogen. We'll get back, we'll talk about that. Hydrochloric acid also activated the lingual lipase. It was there in our saliva, but not doing anything until it got into the stomach and it got down to where uh, there was a very acid pH. Hydrochloric acid also kills bacteria that's in our food. You know, the, the food that we eat, it's not sterile. There's plenty of bacteria in it. And actually, in many of the meals that you eat, technically, there can be a dangerous bacteria or two in there. But as long as the number of those bacteria, those dangerous ones, is small, they are destroyed by the hydrochloric acid and the pepsinogen in your stomach. It's only when those levels of bacteria are significant that we end up with food poisoning. This is important. Hydrochloric acid takes the iron that's found in your food 
from that form, which has got an oxidation state of three plus to an oxidation state of two plus, okay? In other words, hydrochloric acid takes the iron that's in the food into a version of iron that our body can absorb and use. Without hydrochloric acid in your stomach, you will develop an iron deficiency, right? That's interesting too. Um, hydrochloric acid also helps us to get more nutrition out of the food that we've eaten. Um, if you're like me and you had a kale salad for lunch, um, I honestly did not chew that kale well enough to break open every one of the cell walls inside of that tough kale stuff. Um, I swallowed a lot of those cells without crushing them open. Hydrochloric acid will break down the cell walls in plants, open it up so that the nutrition that's inside of the cells will be available to my body. Also connective tissue. If you, like me, had a hamburger for dinner last night, then some of the stuff that's ground up in that hamburger, it's like connective tissue. That connective tissue is made out of protein, but it's not that easy for my enzymes to digest. Hydrochloric acid will break it down a little bit and make it more available for my nutrition. So hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid does a lot. Yeah, don't forget the intrinsic factor. Right? Intrinsic factor is made by the same cells that make hydrochloric acid, but intrinsic factor um, helps you absorb B12. Now, we already have mentioned an enzyme called pepsinogen, so this is going to be a good moment to talk in general about a category of enzymes that are called zymogens. Enzymes, um, I have encouraged you to think of them as being like robots. And enzymes, some of them put things together and build things, and some of them tear things apart. The ones that tear things apart in general get called digestive enzymes. Even if they're not helping us digest food, they get called digestive enzymes. And out of those categories, there are some of those enzymes that are ripping things apart that are particularly dangerous. The ones that are super, super dangerous are the proteases. Proteases are that whole category of enzymes that digest proteins. Remember, we had amylases for starch, lipases for triglycerides, proteases for proteins. The most important molecules in your body are proteins. So proteases, if they are um, unleashed where there are living cells, they'll destroy those cells. So we have got to make sure that proteases do not get turned into their active state until they are far away from the living cells that made them. We're going to talk about that process and about zymogens in general at the beginning of our next lecture.